Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this Friday's cryptocurrencies update for August the 30th, 2024. One more day, and then this month will also go into the history books, and we move into September, which they say is not a favorable month for cryptocurrencies, but <clears throat> it hasn't been favorable pretty much all year once things stopped in March. Um, the corrective pattern that we've been tracking has been very complicated and might turn into a seven swing corrective pattern. We always start off with a three wave corrective pattern, but it can always turn into seven waves or even 11 or etc. You know what I mean? Because we cannot predict the future. We do not know beforehand if it's going to be three, seven, 11 or not. All we can do is after three waves down, expect at least three waves back up because that would then keep our mind open for the fact that yes, we can get another set of three waves lower. And that is what we so far got. And it seems like we're tagging on another set. And not much has changed, of course, since our previous uh, update. And, um, you know, we're still in the warning signs are flashing setup. Nothing's been disproven because we haven't moved above any critical levels yet. Instead, the charts remain bearish looking from a trend perspective. Where is price in relationship to its moving averages, Ichimoku cloud? What are the technical indicators doing? Price is the final arbiter. And that is why we, of course, use the alert wave because the alert wave is price-based. It's not a opinion. Yes, there will be changes to the alert wave count, but the alert wave count changes in accordance with new available data. Anybody who doesn't get that is, in my humble opinion, and I'll say it out loud, a limited mental capacity person. Why? Because you just don't understand how it works and refuse to learn how it works. It is the nature of forecasting that when new data becomes available, your forecast changes. And if your forecast continues to change day by day, minute by minute, you know, you really have to reassess what you're doing. But most of the time, we're always wondering, you know, was it a first wave or an A wave? Was it a first wave or a C wave? Was it a four or a larger four? It was it A or all of, <clears throat> excuse me, the correction. That is often where we um, are grappling with the options that the market has. And eventually the market will tell us which one it is based on breaking above or below certain price levels. There's nothing more to it. It's just like weather forecasting. When you forecast the weather a week out, all you can do is go by the data that's available right now. How do the pressure uh, isobars line up? What's the temperature doing, the wind direction? You name it. All those things go into consideration for what it will be next Friday. And then when we get to next Wednesday and Thursday, we've got, of course, a different forecast, unless you live here in sunny California, when it's always the same weather. But, you know, sometimes we have a sunny morning and sometimes we have a cloudy morning. Those things, of course, can change. Uh, some days it is uh, 30 degrees Celsius and other days it's 20 degrees Celsius. So there is change, though the weather pattern in general is quite similar day by day. So it's not that difficult, but other regions of the world are very difficult, especially mountainous regions. And when you get closer to your forecast date, the forecast changes. So when I forecast that next week it will be 30 degrees, come next Thursday, I will fine tune it to probably 27, 28. So the forecast from a week ago is still pretty good. Maybe I have to change it to 40 or 10. It depends. Here in California, it's not going to be 10. 40 might be more likely, though where I live, it's so temperate that will barely ever happen. So that is really all we're doing. Anticipate, monitor, adjust. I can't say it out loud enough. I can't say it often enough. And this is for folks that are uh, watching this video later after the fact on YouTube and maybe if through my Twitter account if I so desire to post it on there. Um, it's just I have a limited uh, amount of bandwidth to do all that stuff. But that's really all there is to it. The method is um, proven right 
more often has been proven wrong. And if the other wave count changes, it is simply because new data becomes available and our initial analysis was wrong. So we're gonna go straight to Bitcoin and this is the first wave count we have. We did a 76.4% retrace of the decline that ended in August uh, low. And so far this rarely looks three waves corrective. The decline looks also like three waves corrective. Um, this rally was five waves, <laughs> but it was not the start of a new impulse higher, unfortunately. Uh, this decline looks like five waves, but if this is five waves, it doesn't rhyme with these five waves. This looks better as three waves, so we could turn it into a leading diagonal if we so need to do once if, of course, Bitcoin breaks below 38,000. So CSA targets about 44, 43,000. It's just the mere potential I'm pointing out. Now look where price is in relationship to its moving averages. The 200 days on top, the 50 days below that, then the 10 and the 20, and we're below the Ichimoku cloud. So this is still a almost 100% bearish looking chart. So should we then prefer this wave count? Yes, until proven otherwise. First warning for the bears is back above yesterday's high. And as you can see, every single time we rally, it gets sold off. The second warning level for the bears is, of course, above 65,120. The third warning level is, of course, above the July high. And the final warning level for the bears is all the way back above the March high. So as long as we stay below these levels, the bears have nothing to worry about. Get Above these levels, especially 65, 120, we're going to get above the 200 day, the Ichimoku cloud, all that good stuff. And chances of good things happening, like here in February, increase. Again, you can see what happens that the, um, during this correction, it's not always a guarantee. So this is why we raise stops and this is why we take profits along the way, because there's no guarantee even that five waves up, which was, this was a other wave um, salivating wet dream wave count unbelievable i've never seen it this clean and clear but it was a c wave and c waves are often five waves yes very sad that really rocked my boat so yeah to the point where i there go like does this uh, even invalidate the other wave no it doesn't uh, we can quite elegantly um change this to the wave count shown here with a irregular expanded flat b wave so moving on to what the bulls need to do, and that is again, break above these warning levels um, for the bears. Okay, that's what they need to do. They'll ultimately get back above the A wave high from a couple of days ago, potential A wave, okay? Because with this mess, everything at the moment is still a potential. These were the warning levels for the bulls and we've broken below two of those. So now I'm gonna actually change those warning levels because we've moved lower. So the first warning level is pretty much here. The second warning level is going to be there. And the third warning level there. And then fourth. Okay, so the bulls really need to hold these levels. If they can't, ta-da, be ready for the low to mid 40,000s. It's still okay for a fourth wave, which is that, whew, I would say, uh, quite extensive and protracted in both time and price. I would have really liked to see it just hold here in the low 50s for a typical 38.2% retail, but it's still not uh, in the realms of impossibilities and not allowed. It's still okay. So this is what we're gonna look at for a potential rally that needs to break above at least 65,120 to be able to target into the low 70,000 for this potential C slash three. But this is for now the alternative because price is below these moving averages in Ichimoku cloud. Let's move on to Ethereum. Ethereum, we have adjusted the warning levels for the bears accordingly. And this is our preferred wave count because price is below the declining 20, 50, 200 day Ichimoku cloud. We start to see potential positive divergence developing. Of course, we haven't gone below the August low yet, but that would be great if we do it in the sense of these positive divergence. I know it's a condition, it's not a trigger, but it would support the case for this final fifth wave lower um, to, I would say, around 2100, not much lower than that. That would be fantastic positive divergence. This rally still looks better as corrective, but we have the alternative and that we still have only bottomed at the upper end of the ideal wave two target zone, which then sh should be a expanded irregular flat or irregular expanded flat. 
again, the warning levels for the bulls have been broken, and this is a, a bullish wave count. So we're going to adjust those levels accordingly, and that means the first and second. We haven't broken below the third one yet. So we're going to lower that one a little bit, and I would say the second warning should be then somewhere here, and then the first warning should be somewhere there. Let's go a little bit like this. It's a little arbitrary here because the price um, levels are so close to each other, but you get the idea, right? The lower we go, the more likely it is that this wave count is operable. But I can make a case for either one, two, uh, and two as then this irregular expanded flat. But obviously we need to go at least above 28, 25-ish, um, 25 this wave four high to suggest this is not a wave four anymore. If we then break above 3,100, this potential wave one low, it really increases the odds. This is not a wave four. It can still be a B wave, and this is an A wave, similar to what we had here for Ethereum, of uh, Bitcoin. But then the odds that that is the case start to diminish quite rapidly. And if we go above 3,560, this B wave high, uh, then I think it is really time for the bears to hibernate and for the bulls to become much more active. So these are the two options. And unfortunately, nothing has changed. I, I wish it was really different. Okay. I'm, I'm a little sad about the cryptos. There's just not much going on. Uh, honestly, this is, uh, yeah, it's pathetic. The, the, this year has been, I, I would say, disappointingly pathetic. Up to March, it was great. And ever since, it's been pathetic. There is absolutely no bid in the market right now. Uh, if there was, we would like to see much higher prices, and, and there's not. So this is quite disappointing. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Cryptos have been disappointing this year. Uh, if you're a crypto fan, uh, you're not diversifying and have all your Nasdaqs and cryptos, uh, I'm sorry, you've missed the boat on gold, which has been much better. Um, let's just look here at uh, GLD, all right? This is, uh, this is GLD in the same time frame. <laughs> okay, it went from 184 to 234. That is uh, $20, $50. That is almost a 30% rally. Okay, so uh, Ethereum done nothing. So please, please consider my other services if you think your portfolio is pretty still to doing nothing. I know you can stake, I know there's um, payouts with Beto and that type of stuff. It's all nice and dandy, but you know, again, I, I prefer to be in things that go up. GLD is a very simple one. With my service, we've been bullish, I don't know, ever since I started it last year. And I'm surprised how few people are interested in it. Uh, but you know, uh, then you missed the boat. I, I, I'm not. Um, I'm still in it and I'm in it to win it. And then, you know, just look at the average index. Way better than crypto. Crypto has been underperforming pathetically um you know you probably go oh i'm gonna just not go against my account and services and all that stuff but it is what it is so i hope you're in the stock market uh, i hope you're in in um other etfs uh especially related to the miners and gold and silver um if not then please consider it why because i want you all to make money it is available to you. Uh, don't focus on one thing. I, I do all three of them and I have no problems with it. Some days it's better than others, but I, I've really noticed that the ones that are crypto related are uh, severely underperforming and hurting my portfolio a lot to the point where I go, like, I'm just going to cut all of it. Um, but I'm not, I, I mean, to win it. So I'm sticking with it, so to say, but it is really Obvious. Is it an ominous sign for worse things to come? No, I think all these um, markets are completely unrelated. Yes, once we get a big fat crash, everything crashes. Bonds, gold, silver, cryptos, everything will crash. Why? Because everything is a risk having it on the books. And when we get into a severe market crash like 2020, uh, 22, um, that of course, 2009 market crash, everything gets sold. Very, very simple. Some stocks might go up, maybe some defensive ones, all that's, uh, like utilities, uh, but others, everything gets sold. So there is not going to be any hiding. But for now, um, there's been a, a lot of exposure, of course, to other sectors of the financial market. Uh, this is a fantastic looking strong trend, right? This is fantastic. Look, ever since we broke back above the 
50 and a 20 in Ichimoku cloud, it's been just raging. That's what you want. And that's not what we're seeing right now. And um, so please take everything into consideration. Don't stare just blindly to one thing and think that is going to be um, the salvation. Most of the time it's not. So here is then ETHE. Yes, still could be a fourth wave. Nothing has changed to this four five setup. Uh, alternatively, all of course, all of this wave four here in black completed. Um, if not, then we'll simply move things over there. I would like to see five waves because that would you know, be an A, a B, and then a C wave of this wave four would be really classic. Okay, so far 161.8, so far 100%. And then, of course, a nice five is one relationship, doesn't have to be all the way, gets us to about $14. Right, that'd be absolute magic if we get that. Um, I think the Elliott wave um, has reached another level, <laughs> so to say. Uh, but for now, again, just look at where price is bearish. So I, I see no reason to turn bullish. The alternative to ETH. ETHE is shown in this chart that we're in this wave two, uh, that again can target somewhere in this um, $13, $14 region, which is a 76.4% retrace. Uh, unfortunately, stock charts doesn't have that retrace. Um, somehow it's, uh, they consider that not uh, an important level, I guess, uh, but you can see here somewhere around there. So this is the reverse, of course, right? If, if we're gonna bottom there, as you can see, Third, somewhere around there, uh, then we can do our potential three, four, and five setup. So there is still um, massive room for improvement, so to say. Um, not all things, um, it's not dead yet. So there's plenty of good potential out there. Okay, so one, two, one, two, three, four, three, four. And this is then two. So it's alternative interpretation based on a monthly chart. And uh, wouldn't surprise me if, if this is going to happen. So we have, of course, their negative divergence. Okay, we have here also negative divergence, but a lot of money, more money has flown in ever. Well, that is since 2019, so it hasn't been around, but this is really uh, a strong sign. And often when we get this overbought, um, selling needs to happen first before we can move higher. So we'll keep an eye on this one again, somewhere around $14, potentially as low as $11, $12 could still happen. I don't know actually um, why this yet there. So there, that would be the wave two to be determined. But again, the daily chart doesn't look happy. And that's really all I wanted to focus on in, in this update. Uh, sorry for the long story. I also wanted to point out that there is many other ways for your money to be put to work. Um, gold has been fantastic. Um, again, you're free to do whatever you do. It's not a sales pitch. Uh, I'm saying this because I, I want you to make money and clearly the cryptos, maybe there's some altcoins out there that's ripped. I don't know. There are 5,000 altcoins. I cannot track all of them. But if clearly Bitcoin hasn't done, uh, of, uh, Ethereum hasn't done anything this year. Um, it is up from 2,100 to 2,500. Well, so much for buy and hold. Um, whereas gold is, as I said, up 30%. Bitcoin itself is a little better. Um, as you can see, it went from about 38,000 and now it's 60,000. It's not even a double. Uh, we almost got a double here in March. That, that, that was it. Since then, it's been um, yeah, frustratingly boring. And I remember uh, one of our um, brethren mentioned um, that there was indeed no buy order flow at all in August, nothing all the way. So let's uh, see, actually, if we go to seasonality for uh, Bitcoin, what, what can we expect? And has um, seasonality been reasonably accurate in forecasting um, Bitcoin? So here seasonality says we should rally all the way into August, right? It's pretty much bullish and then week into September. Hmm. Now we kind of peaked out here and it's been down since. So technically your seasonality is not relevant for the current price action at all. Okay. And don't take this in absolutes. It's not that we have to go up 280%. Yes, it suggests September should be weak, but it also suggests we should be strong all the way into August. Well, that hasn't really happened. We've done quite the reverse. So maybe September will be really strong. Um, to, for that to happen, we know which price levels have to go to the upside 
for the bears to relinquish their um, upper hand because they're in the upper hand right now. That's what the charts are telling us. So I hope you appreciate this update. I know there's not much new to tell you other than that the warning lights are still flashing and I, I wish they weren't, but they are. Once they stop flashing, you'll be the first to, to know. That is for sure. But I always want to put that warning out uh, there because the charts just look bleak. All right. And uh, with that, I'm going to sign off. I know I had a, a more positive message to tell you. The positive message is there's many other ways for you to make money uh, using my services. So please uh, consider that. Um, or, is, you know, we can also have a, just a nice coffee chat if you want. Send me an email. Uh, I don't bite. Um, I'm here to help. Um, just always uh, provide positive uh Critique if you have any, and if you have any other insights that I should show, that I should use in my analysis, please let me know, um, you know, two no more than one. And I'm always uh, looking for uh, additional pieces of evidence that help me in determining which of these two wave counts is, uh, is the most likely. Take care, trade safe. And remember, no update on Monday. It is, of course, Labor Day. Enjoy the day off and we'll catch you somewhere mid next week.